Hey there, and welcome to Module 1, Your Relationship with Your Vet. Now this is a super important section. These days there's a lot of hate and vitriol flying around, especially around allopathic veterinarians. In this section, I want to emphasize the importance of compassion. This is not a section in which you will find conspiracy for the medical industry. Instead, you will find practical ways to work with your healthcare providers effectively. My main goal here is to set you, your dog, and your vet up for success. You and your vet are equal heroes in your dog's health story. The hero in any story cannot succeed unless they are given all the tools and information from the supporting cast. Your vet is the hero of healing, and you are the hero of facilitation. The truth is, vets are really busy, and in most cases overworked with a ton of pressure to save animals they grew up idolizing. Even the best caretaker can fall short when given human traits and problems to deal with. Oftentimes, because of their plight of their profession, they fail to also understand the patient. Pet parents often expect too much from a single person and don't come to appointments fully aware or prepared. Talking with each other is like two ships passing in the night. Let's talk about jobs and roles for a minute. The role of the pet parent in most health situations is to become mindful and aware of all of the options. Your job is to extract all options from your vet so that you can make informed and empowered decisions. On the flip side, Dr. Miracle Worker is not your vet's job title. Although that is what every vet wants for each animal, they are still human. A vet's job is to use their medical knowledge to do what they feel is in the best interest for you and your pet. Their job is to explain the economics, details, and options to you after you bring them to their attention. It is not their job to spill the worlds of literature upon you and create plans and protocols that have never been done before. That is up to you to bring those details to light. And I think that's where a lot of us pet parents stumble because we have that part backwards. Vets are always doing their best at any given time and sometimes they need our assistance to cross the finish line. In this module, you'll learn how to effectively communicate in order to take an active role in your dog's well-being. Step 1. Get organized. Ask if you can record your conversation, and if not, bring a notebook with you. But be mindful. In some states, you're not allowed to record conversation without full disclosure, so make sure you ask your vet if it's okay with them first. There will be words you don't understand and concepts that may be tough to think about in the moment, so having the freedom to revisit conversations can be helpful. Sometimes nerves just get the best of us, and that's okay. When you do not understand the full scope and whole view of what something means, ask. Step two, channel your inner Dalai Lama. By starting sentences with the word you, the recipient automatically feels under attack, and your dog cannot get the best care when their only vet is feeling shamed and blamed. So instead of asking in language that is confrontational, such as, you're not making any sense to me, use I statements like, I am not understanding that part. Can you please see that differently? Nine times out of 10, they will be happy to repeat themselves. And if they aren't, take your things and find a new doctor ASAP. Step three, become a parrot. Repeat everything back to your doctor. Think of it like mid-conversational recaps. Use your own words so the vet has to listen in different language and make the connection. And so that you know that you understand it completely. Step four, grab your markers. If you don't understand what something is unless you see it visually, ask for a sketch or to see the x-ray or scans themselves. 60% of the population are visual learners. Ask for a visual from your vet. 
it can really help. Step five, be the CEO of your own wellness team. Think about your situation like this. You're a manager of a small team at work. Good managers recognize the strengths of their team and let them do their work. A good manager provides direction and strategy and the team can complete the task. Each team member needs to communicate with each other and with you in order to meet the goal of the company, which in this case is a healthy dog. You need to be strong, amiable, and direct in order to accomplish what you need. You are not wrong or hurting anyone's feelings. You're getting shit done in a direct and purposeful way. A doctor can't help you if you don't tell them exactly what you're thinking. They're not mind readers, so if you feel rushed, bullied, confused, intimidated, or unsatisfied, speak up. There is no room for shyness when your dog is cancer. Be assertive. Your dog's life depends on it. Tip for shy people. So if you're anything like me, you can be a little intimidated. Take a look at how you feel about authority figures. Do they scare or intimidate you, or do they get you tongue-tied? Try reframing your thoughts as, if I give my opinion, others will be able to benefit from my point of view. Make sure you take your time, take conscious, deep breaths, and think about what you want to say so that you're not rushed. Hopefully this helps you have a better relationship with your vet and we can move on to module two, which is all about the diagnostic process.